Ricky in here. Do one of you want this microphone? All right, there you go. Thank you, sir.
Oh, there we go. Hey, do you want to help me? I need someone to hold my candy bucket tonight. You get rewarded by holding it. You get to pick something out of it. I'll put you over here in that chair. Don't let anybody steal it. Trust me. There are people that would like to take two. They only get one, all right, when they come up. So we're going to get five winners up here. And ladies, no pressure on you, ladies from Golden State Baptist College. In Bible training, you should know the Bible very well. Be able to find books of the Bible. You probably memorized it in your sleep. But I do want you to know that as a little brother Sloan, two years ago, we had a guys group down here, unchaperoned, maybe that's the reason why they weren't in their Bibles, unchaperoned guys, and they could not, one of them, not one of them could get up here in our winner's circle. Last year, one young lady from the group, Brother Trevor's uh, niece, got up here, and she actually won the whole thing. Now, these people are fast with their Bibles, so I'm just warning you, okay? Don't feel bad if you don't get up here. But try your best. All right, here we go. Bible's up. Our keyword tonight is music. So you have to find the verse, and then if you can stand and start reading it, by all means. But I need to hear your voice and read until you get to the word music. All right, here we go. 1 Samuel 18.6. 1 Samuel 18.6. All right, now hang on. I'm going to change something. The word music in this verse is at the very end, so you don't have to read the whole verse, all right? Just find the word music and read the last phrase. 1 Samuel 18, 6, ready, charge! So the people went out to the field against Israel, the battle no, the of Israel. No, it's not so the people. Oh, 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 oh. Do over, do over, come on. Yes, and make instruments of music. What right. are you in, brother? Were you close? Yeah. I was in second Sam. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. There we go. Keeping yeah. everybody honest. Keeping everybody honest. Here we go. Ready? I'm just going to all the winners will come up in a minute. All right. Here we go. Ready? Psalms 4-1. Psalms 4-1. I don't see music in this at all. Hang on. I don't see the word music in that verse. Just a second. Let me switch. All right. So we're not doing Psalms 4-1. Okay. Here we go. Lamentations 363. Lamentations 363. This one has music. Ready? Charge. Lamentations 363. Behold, they're sitting down in their rising cup. Yes, behold, they're sitting down in their rising cup. I tell their music. Good job. All right, here we go. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Ready? We actually looked at this verse. Of the province, I got me men singers and women singers and the likes of the sons of men. As musical instruments. Good job, Miss Caitlin. All right, so so far, Miss Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, Miss Caitlin, and Kirsten. All right, I got it. Ready? Here we go. Last chance, ladies. Last chance. Here we go. Let's go to the New Testament. A little bit easier. Ready? Bibles up. Luke. 1525. 1525. Charge. Ah. Wow. Who started? Who started? Nancy. Got it. Roy, good job. Because I remember Roy's name. Sit down. Sorry. You know what, Megan? You sit down, brother, because you're a LeBron James fan. Sit down. Okay. All right. Which way you like to start it? Okay, Abby then? Is it Abby? Oh, I remember that because that's my daughter's name. All right, good job. 
Two ladies. All right, good job. Come on up here. Those five that won. No, just those five. Just those five that won. All right. Yeah, an interesting fact is they're coming. Did you know the word music is only mentioned two times in the New Testament? And here's the second time. Are you ladies ready? We have all ladies? Wait, no, it's it's just oh, are you going to do it back from there, Miss Caitlin? All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Just so you know, she's not lazy. She's expecting. All right, here we go. Revel I don't want anybody to think badly. So here we go. Revelation 18.22. Revelation 18.22. Charge. Oh, no pressure, Kirsten. No pressure. Pressure first fight. And, and, and musicians! <laughs> <laughs> so All right, good job. Let's go ahead and get a reward over here. Let's get them all over here. You get a reward, not just the one winner. All of you get a reward over there. And, and Davey, yeah, since you helped me out, oh, I'll let you get a candy bar. You get the special one. All right? Good job, ladies. So, two of you got up here. That means that you have bragging rights. Oh, brother Chris. Oh, okay. Give him for Miss Caitlin. Just check. Just check. I was going to say, you're not the temptation. All right? So, good job. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate that. You ladies have bragging rights over the last group that came the Echoes of Joy. Right? Man, I'm just double checking the names. I'm getting all confused. Let's just call you Golden State Baptist College. Group one, all right? That'll make it easier. All right, so you had a brain rich. You had two up here, although their young lady did win the whole thing. So in that sense, they have a little bit of brain rich. But you ladies did a good job. Victory Baptist, we did good. We got the overall winner, but we need to work on it a little more for next year. No one gets up here next year. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, let's go ahead and sing another song. Turn to page 234. Stand with me, we'll sing Amazing Grace, and as we're singing Amazing Grace, we'll dismiss our toddler church, and then after we're done singing Amazing Grace, we'll go ahead and have the voices of praise come and sing a few more songs, and then Brother Sloan will deliver the challenge tonight. Page 244, Amazing Grace, we'll sing all four verses, toddler church will dismiss you on the second. Sing that extra verse with me of just praise God, acapella. We'll sing it acapella. 
Praise God, praise God. Ready? Praise God, 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 praise God. Once again, do appreciate the uh, scene group being here tonight. Brother Josh, real quick before they get up here, can you get their sound off just this one microphone? Um, actually, what I, I mean, I have, I have an honor sound. It's fixed. Do you need them to use both the microphones? No, they can leave it right, there. So that I think that's why we were getting the interference was because the two, uh, yeah, I just, the two I, I microphones. Are, so ladies, you don't have to use the other one. Why don't you go ahead and come and sing to us again? They have a few more songs they're going to sing, and then Brother Sloan, as soon as they're done, you go ahead and come on up and make yourself known. Thank you. 
because the reason why I'm a such a big fan of LeBron is because LeBron and I have I didn't come from a perfect home. I came from a broken home. I have uh, my mom and my stepdad. When I was about three years old, the only image I saw of my father was when the cops took him away from me. I've never seen him since. Um, I grew up in Bronx, New York, and I grew up in just the worst environment. You name it, I've seen it all. I've witnessed it. I've done a lot of things that. Know, should not be done at the age of 12. And so my mom decided to move us out of New York into something better than what we grew up around. And so it just, it just so happened to be that where we, moved, where we moved into was a specific bus route section. And I thank God for the good church on wheels. Amen. And just so happened that we made neighborhood friends and they just happened to go to Salah Baptist Church in New Jersey. So the next week the bus captain followed up on us. We were riding the bus since for a year straight, and we started driving it a year straight, and then after that, we started becoming faithful members. And I thank God for His grace and His mercy on my life. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things that you know I wish I'd never done, I wish I'd never seen, but I just thank God that He's allowed me. He still uses me to this day. And it's one thing for me to live it, and then it's another thing for me to actually be, as I speak to Many of the teenagers say, I was, and still is, in the same shoes that you guys are in right now. God can use me. God can definitely use you. Amen. That's good. Hey, Praise the Lord. Good morning. Brother? Well, now I, now I understand. We'll forgive him. For the right. <laughs> so we understand the spiritual aspect of it. <laughs> so let me encourage you to step, uh, stop by the table there, if you would, after uh, the services. Uh, I want to encourage and ask the pastor and the church family, We can, one month from this week we have the college days coming up, so any young people who would like to go to that, that activity, <coughs> it's a fun time, they're able to see the college from a classroom setting, uh, as well as hear good preaching, and so that's one month from this week if you would like to come, and then uh, I have a magnet back there for every young person who comes back there, or uh, you adults, if you would please come back there so you can pray for ministry. This is a magnet to remind you to pray for uh, the ministry there. And how many of you enjoy good Christian radio? Amen. Good Christian music, good preaching, and so we have a radio station at the church. It's internet radio. You can get it 24 hours a day. It's KNBBC radio. And so let me encourage you to take one of these cards. We have them back there as well. Visit the website and download the app for your Android, mobile device, your iPhone, uh, and so do uh, uh, avail yourself to that great ministry, KNBC Radio, good Christian music, uh, great preaching from uh, preachers from the past, as well as preachers from the present. So let me encourage you, you to go back and avail yourself to uh, the ministry opportunities we have there, as well as the CDs, as Pastor said. Uh, it is important for you, especially when we have children in the home, to have good Christian music to replace that music that certainly after this morning's message you will be taking away from your home, and it's important for you to have good, godly Christian music in the home. Uh, so let me encourage you to avail yourself to those materials and resources back there on the table. Luke and chapter number 14, if you would. Luke. And chapter number 14, Brother uh, Miller, Pastor, and I, our families used to live uh, in two different villages, but they were very close to each other, uh, just one right after the other. And how many of you have seen anything that's been taking place uh, in Ukraine in the last couple of weeks? Watching that. Did any of you see any pictures or video of the mansion that the president was living in? Uh, that was just down the street from where we used to live. Uh, it was on my side of the highway. We used to live on the other side of the highway. And my, my house, right after that, was an open field. And on the other side of that field was where the president lived. And then another pastor that lived uh, there in the same area as us, his house was just a couple of houses down from the gate, the entrance to that mansion that uh, it used to be just a regular house for government officials. But then... He turned it into quite the mansion there. He had a he had a uh, yacht 
He had a pond, and he had a yacht on the pond. He couldn't go anywhere, but he had a yacht there that uh, was used just for the, his parties that he had. Uh, and in that yacht he had, it was all uh, made of solid wood, and inside marble, and the table, and uh, had a fireplace that had just amazing woodwork in it. The chandeliers for his house and his yacht cost six million euros. And so that's about nine million dollars. It cost just for the chandeliers. His toilet seats were made of gold. I kid you not. And so this is the man that was governing us whenever we were over there, uh, which is for, uh, for some reason why, uh, one of the reasons why we can no longer be there for a long period of time. Uh, it became a dictatorship, and it became very anti-West and anti-American and anti-missionary, and so it was very, very difficult to, to continue living there. Uh, but those were good memories. I remember Sunday nights we used to go over to the Miller's house, put the kids to bed. Uh, at the time it was only Abby, Naomi, and Esther. Right? <laughs> Esther was Esther was. Like, how old is Esther now? Seven. Yeah, so it was Esther was the baby at the time. Only girls. But we only had boys at the time. We had two boys at the time, and they had only girls at the time. And so we'd go over to their house, and everything was pink. They'd come over to our house, and everything was boy. Uh, but we'd go over, put the kids down to bed, and we would play games until like 2 o'clock in the morning. That's what missionaries do. Come on. <laughs> and then sleep in the next morning until about 6.30 when the kids would wake us up. Uh, but at any rate, fond memories there uh, with the Millers Club in the Kiel area, the capital city. And so it is our honor to be here with you. Once again, I was with you about a year and a half ago, reporting to the church of what God was doing in our lives and ministries over in Ukraine, as well as in Israel. We were supposed to be over there. I was supposed to be over there preaching all day today, and then starting a pastor's conference tomorrow. We had about 15 churches coming in for those conferences. But as you can well imagine, those churches cannot even go from one city to the next, much less come down to that region uh, where we're going to have the, the conferences. And uh, so we had to cancel those conferences after that. We were supposed to go down into Israel and preach in the churches there. Uh, but all of that had to be suspended. And uh, we'll, Lord willing, be doing that in the next couple of months before it allows. Uh, but it, it has been our honor and privilege for the last 12 years to serve alongside uh, this great church family. And I'm excited about what God is doing. The church is growing. And, I mean, just with adults and young people that are here, this is a great crowd. And I love your new facilities. This is great. How many of you are happy that you're here instead of your old building? You like this new area, this new building? I think you're getting new visitors. How many of you never saw the old building? How many of you never saw the old building? Okay. All right. Very good. But it is great. I'm very glad that you're here. Now, I do have to give a shout-out to the Josh, but Josh seems like he's doing great. He's a daddy now. Wow, who would have ever thought that? <laughs> so, he's a daddy, seven-month-old girl, right? What's her name? Kylie. Kylie. All right, so congratulations. You've changed him down. And uh, it's great. Uh, and then, uh, Brother Daniel. Quite the man. Brother, brother, be careful how you use those words. And first thing I asked him, how many of you have never seen Brother Daniel's Buck belt uh, Oh my goodness. First thing I said whenever I saw him this afternoon, I said, where's the belt buckle? Well, sure enough, he had it there. He's the meekest, humblest <laughs> person I have ever met. You know, I'm not the same person? And I mean, the guy is just the, the epitome of humility. And, uh, yeah, uh, you didn't know what you were getting yourself into whenever you started befriending him, did you? Yeah. So, praise the Lord. Well, hopefully she'll tame him as well. Uh, Josh. And so, praise the Lord. Happy to be here with you. Thank you very much for allowing our group to be here. We've been looking forward to this. And uh, would you imagine, would you believe, this is the first time these ladies have sung uh, today. These are first churches to visit and sing. Amen. And how many of you think they did a good job? Amen. 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 Amen.
And uh, so Brother Roy normally sings soprano, the high soprano though, but uh, we didn't have that pink jacket for him to, uh, is that orange or is that pink? It's what? Coral. It's coral root. Only the lady kind of the coral. Coral. Only the ladies, yeah. <laughs> kind of matches Pastor's shirt. Well, I don't think so. Yeah. Hey, I'm not getting a love offering anyway. It's good. <laughs> Daniel knew it was coral, though. So. Daniel, yeah. He's the master of this. So, at any rate, now, here's the thing. We, we had a good meal this afternoon. And Brother Roy was helping us. See that banner back there in the back? Brother Roy was helping us. And he gained a little bit of weight today. And as soon as he lifted that up, it ripped his suit coat. Oh, no. And so I don't know if you want to take up a love offering for him. You know, he's a poor college student, you know. And uh, But at any rate, rip that out. And so that pastor, that is why he doesn't have a coat on. Oh, okay. We're not lowering our standards or anything like that. He just ripped out his suit coat. We better get to the Bible tonight. Come on. <laughs> Luke chapter 14. Have I given you enough time to find Luke chapter yes. 14? I mean, I know we've been having some hard times finding those books in the Bible yeah. tonight. Yeah. And so Luke chapter 14. You happy here in church tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Great. How many of you have been saved 10 years or less? Would you raise your hand? 10 years? Or less, 10 years or less. You've been saved 10 years or less. How many of you have been saved 5 years or less? 5 years or less. How many of you have been saved 3 years or less? 3 years three years or less. She didn't raise her hand on 5, but she did raise her hand on 3. That's When were you saved? 2011, so almost 3 years ago. When were you saved, my brother? About 2 years ago now. Two years ago. Wonderful. <laughs> Nate, when were you saved? Now, seven, two years ago. Okay, coming up on three years in July. Is that right? <laughs> we saved in July? No. <laughs> <laughs> October, that's right. <laughs> when were you saved? You have five kids now, brother. <laughs> Nate, when, when were you saved? October. October? 31st. 31st, Halloween. That's right. <laughs> And then he was saved in Ukraine, and then we had to leave Ukraine to go into Israel. And we were in Israel. Tell them where you got baptized. At the Jordan River. Amen. Amen. Baptized at the Jordan River. So he got a double portion whenever he got baptized. Uh, but we took the whole church up there and had a baptismal service. Him and another adult uh, were baptized there uh, in the Jordan River. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I'm happy you're here. You're in church exactly where you should be. Right? Yep. And so, daylight savings time. And so, good to see you here in church. Luke chapter 14 in your Bibles, if you would. Luke chapter number 14 and verse number 12. Luke chapter 14 and verse number 12. I want to uh, speak for the next few minutes this evening regarding the needs that you might have in your life. <clears throat> How many of you would agree? that you have some needs in your life. We all have needs. Right. We all have needs that we need to be fulfilled. We all have needs that we need God to meet. So I want to share with you a principle that Jesus gives us whenever we are in need. Verse number 12, Then said he also to him, that made him. He was invited to a banquet. Now, to preface this, during the time of Christ, whenever you were a person who wanted someone else to help you in something, you were a person who maybe had a need and you knew someone that could help you with that need, you would throw a banquet. Maybe this was an important person, a person that had great wealth and influence. You would throw a banquet and invite this person to come over and uh, help you and be with, in your banquet. And perhaps you would ask them for the need that you had. You remember the story of Esther. She had a need. She needed someone to do something for her. She needed the king to come through for her. And so she threw a banquet. And you remember the king asked, what do you want to ask of me? Anything that you need. Well, that's what is happening here. Jesus was invited to a banquet. 
He knows that this man has a need. And so what he's done is he is somewhat, we might say selfishly, he has taken and he has requested for these people to come, and he's invited them to the banquet. And it's expected, because that is the culture of the day, it's expected that he's going to present his need to the people whom he has invited to this banquet. So Jesus turns to him. Is this microphone on? We can try to turn this one on and then I'll uh, try to use it. There we go. Great. So Jesus turns to the one who invited him to the banquet. And he says, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, implying that you've done this because you have a need, call not thy friend, nor thy, nor thy kinsman, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. He simply said, don't go to the rich. Don't invite your kinsmen. Don't invite your friends. You know they have what you have need of. You know they're wealthy and rich. He says, that's not the people you need to go to when you have a need. Verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, notice here the type of people that you should call. Call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. And here's our theme tonight, verse 14. And thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Do you need a blessing tonight? You need God's help tonight? You need God to come through for you tonight? You need God to meet that need in your life? He gives you the principle right here. Don't go looking to the rich to meet your needs. Don't go to your rich neighbors and your wealthy friends and your kinsmen he says, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. That's our theme tonight, verse number 14, and thou shalt be blessed. How to receive a blessing in your life. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the opportunity we have to open up your word and receive from you principles for life. I pray that you'd bless us tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus is talking to a man here who obviously has a need. I mean, he's had such a need that he's gone to great extents and great lengths to put on this banquet to invite folks to see that need and understand and meet that need. So he's called the most wealthy people of his community. He's gone to the mayor, and he's gone to the senators and the representatives. He's gone to the business leaders, and he's gone to the leaders in the community. And he's invited them to come to his house for this great feast and this great banquet. He's done it not to be a help and a blessing to them. He's done it because he has a need. He wants them to bless him. He wants them to give a recompense to him. And he says in verse 12, Lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. This is the way of today. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You help me, I'll help you. You come for, through for me, I'll come back around and help you out. You help me here, and one day you're going to need my help, and so I'll help you then. It is an egotistical, it's the way, it's the creed, it's the code of the day. I do something in order to receive something back from you. I do something for you with the understanding that you're going to do something for me. I do something not to be a help to you, but I do something so that eventually I'll be helped. It's all about me. It's all about my need. It's all about what I have need of. And Jesus says, no, you got it all wrong. When in fact, the philosophy and the mindset of this world is contrary to what Jesus is teaching us here. He says, when you have a need, when you have need of something, don't go to the rich. Don't go to the wealthy. Don't go to the leaders in your community. Don't go to those that you know 
we'll be able to help you. He says, when you have a need, notice in verse 13, he says, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and go do something for them. Go help them. Go meet their need. Go find out what they have need of and help them. And the promise is, and the principle for our life is, and thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. You and I have great needs. Some of those needs we voice and ask pastor and the church family to pray for. Some of those, those needs are public needs that other people may know about. Some of those needs might be private. Only our family knows about them. Only our close friends know about them. Other needs might be even so private that we don't even voice them to our closest friends. They're what we might call unspoken requests. We bring them to God. We pray about them. We bring them before that throne of grace. But they're only between God and me. There are other needs that you have that you don't even know you have. Needs that God knows you have, but you don't even realize you have them yet. There are needs that will be coming and problems may be on the horizon that you do not even know about, but God knows about. There are needs that others can help you with. There are needs that you might have that you need someone else to help you with. There are needs that you have that you can't help yourself with, but somebody else could. There are other needs that you can help yourself with. Those needs we must provide for ourselves. Don't rely on someone else to provide a need that you can provide for yourself. The, the Christian principle is, if you have a need that you can provide for yourself, don't ask someone else to provide for it. You provide it for yourself. But you see, there are some needs that others can't help me with. I can't help myself with. There are some needs that only God can help me with. For those needs, we need to pray for Him to help us with. But there's a fourth type of need, and those are needs and problems in my life that will never be resolved. Physical needs, financial needs, that will never be resolved in my life. Some of those needs I may carry to the grave with me. Those needs I need to trust God with. Come and lay them at His feet and trust Him with those needs. But every one of us has needs. The way to get God to bless me and to meet the needs in His providence is given to us here in this principle. And here's the message tonight. You meet the needs of those who cannot help you. And when you meet the needs of those who cannot help you, the only one who can help you comes through and meets your needs. You see, you have a need. I have a need. My problem is, I don't want to go help that person that cannot help me. Because I have a need. And that person can't help me. And so why go help him? I don't want to help a person who can't help me whenever I have a need. God says, no, when you have a need, you find someone who cannot help you. And you go help that person because they cannot recompense you. They cannot help you. They cannot meet your need. And it's truly out of love and concern and care for that person. And whenever you go and help that person who cannot help you, then the only one who can help you comes down to your aid and to your help. The principle here is this. Help those who cannot help themselves. Help those who cannot help you. Help those who have nothing that you need. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. My problem is, when I have a need, I want to go to the person that can help me. I want to go to the person who has what I need. I want to go to the person who can provide for my need. And God says no. When you have a need, you go and help the unhelped. You go and help the helpless. You go and help the person that cannot even help themselves and much less can help you. 
and thou shalt be blessed. He's saying this tonight. Take your eyes off of yourself for a moment. Take your eyes off of your own need. Long enough to see the need of another. When was the last time in reality and in truth you saw the need of another person and met that need? And you say, Brother Sloan, there's no way I could do that. You see, I have a need. That's our problem. I have a need and I cannot see beyond my need to see the needs of others. And until I take my eyes off of my need for a moment and see beyond my need and look and see the needs of others, I can't be helped. I cannot be recompensed. Oh, I'll get what I need today. I'll be helped today. He'll scratch my back today. But what about those needs that he cannot meet? What about those needs that this person cannot provide for me? What about those needs that are medical? What about those needs that are spiritual? What about those needs that only God can provide? God says, take your eyes off yourself long enough to see the needs of others. And when you help the person who cannot help you, that's when I'll help you. When you take your eyes off of yourself and your little bubble and your problems and your needs and put your eyes on the needs of those who are in greater need than you, then he says, thou shalt be blessed. Don't go to the rich. Don't call the wealthy. Don't go to your rich neighbors and your rich kinsmen, lest they also bid thee again and a recompense be made. But when you're in great need, and whenever you want to spend time doing something about that need, go find someone who's maimed. Go find someone who's blind. Go find someone who is lame. Go find someone who is in greater need than you and help that person. And God says, I'll see that and I'll bless you. I'll meet your need. Go back with me if you would to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, please, chapter number 7. Book of Matthew, chapter 7. Jesus here is giving us the outline and the principles and some teaching about prayer. He tells us to ask and it should be given us, to seek and we'll find, knock and it shall be open. In verse number 12, he gives us a principle that goes just along with the principle of the book of Luke. This principle, or this rule, if you will, we have it in every country, in every language. In Spanish, uh, Miss Sandy, la regla de oro. In Russian, zakon uh, zakon orla. In in English, the the uh, golden rule. And here he gives us the golden rule. It says whenever you have a need, don't try to help somebody who, who can only help you. Don't only do in, only in order to get. He says in verse number 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. What he's saying is, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You see that person who's in greater need? If you were in a greater need, what would you want someone else to do about it? And he says, and go, do that. Treat others the way you think you would be wanted to be treated. And then he says, when you meet those needs of others, then I'll come through and meet your needs. I'm simply saying tonight, there are people with needs in this auditorium. Yes, we, we're needy people. But there are people who are in greater need than, my, than me. 
There are people that have a need that only you can provide. There are people who are in have a need in which you are a specialist. God has given you the ability and the knowledge to meet the needs of others. God has given you the specialty in which others have need. You're a specialist in the needs of others. You have something that others need. You can be the answer, God's answer to the prayer of others. The greatest need that everyone has is their need for forgiveness, their need for restoration, their need for salvation, their need for assurance of eternal life. And you're a specialist in that need. You have the answer to that need. Or you know where that answer is found. When you have a need, take your eyes off yourself and look at that person that has a greater need than you. What could be greater than the eternal uh, need of a soul? And there are times whenever we see and we're so focused on my need and my problem, and I cannot see the spiritual condition of my neighbor, of my friend, of my brother. Jesus says, take your eyes off yourself for a moment and look beyond your need and see the needs of others. Back to Luke chapter 14, if you would. Luke chapter 14. He says in verse number 14, And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. The Lord is saying, I'll bless you. If not, not only in this life, but also in eternity. In eternity, I'll bless you and give you rewards. Because you took your eyes off yourself, you took your eyes off your need, and you placed it on the needs of others. The principle here is, help those who are helpless. And when you help someone who cannot help you, then the only one who can help you will help you. And will bless you. And thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you would.